Hi everyone, this is Hannah, bringing you this week's tech tip from Strucksoft Solutions, Great Tech Group. Today's topic, we're going to go over how we would create a subassembly and shop drawings for the subassembly and for the panel. Over here, I have a small panel and it has a door opening. I've uh, already created a subassembly and I've given the subassembly a filter just to make it appear in a different color from the rest of the panel. The way I achieved this was by creating a filter for this view. Uh, so if I click on VV here in filters, I've created a filter and this filter is only going to highlight uh, the parts of the subassembly is going to show up in green. And if you like, what you can do is you can save uh, this view as a template by going here in your Revit, going to view templates. Uh, you can create a template from current view and you can manage the template that you created from over here. So I've created one, it's called subassembly and it has the visual settings that I need. Okay, so this is something that you can also apply uh, in MWF tools as well. So let's talk about how we would create a subassembly. There's different ways. One way would be to go over here in settings, go to the subassembly catalog, what you can do is create new, delete, rename, export, and import a subassembly. What I've done is I've created my own. So I had clicked on new, okay? And I have created a catalog called test. In this catalog, I've created an item called test one. You can also rename it from over here. So you can rename a configuration. You can also change the ID. You can even change the image. If you have an image, you can upload it from over here. The type naming can be specified either by instance name, type one, type two, which is by member schedule label, type three, which is by member position name with counter. I'm actually just gonna keep this one, okay? You can add a description over here and that's pretty much it. The way that you would create a, a subassembly would be, well, first of all, uh, you would add the opening marker. I've already done that. So I do have a opening marker type here. I'm gonna show you two ways. One way would be to make a selection of all the elements that you wanna add to your assembly. And then you can go here to this tool where it says output. You can create a subassembly, but you have to give it a name. Another option would be to add elements to an existing subassembly. I'm not gonna use this option. I had already created uh, another panel, but this is in this in case that you wanted to add to uh, another subassembly. And also over here, the last option is, actually I have to select one member of the panel. You can rename a subassembly from over here. So like I would click on it, I can rename it, I can delete it. So this is also something that you can do to manage. So the other way you could make a subassembly is to actually make it through the marker, which is the method that I prefer. The reason why I prefer this method is because I wanna have this saved in my template so I don't have to uh, create a subassembly over and over again so that it gets automatically created. The way you would achieve this is to go to marker manager and go to the marker that you used or you're using. I'm using this one for now. I'll double click uh, to open that marker. All you have to do is tick this option over here that says make subassembly. This subassembly can be chosen from over here. The default is none. You can pick, and this is the one that I had just uh, created. It's called test and there's test one inside test. I'm gonna keep it as none because I just wanna show you what happens. Uh, you can click uh, stamp schedule data and hit okay, and okay, and okay. And if you haven't already, you would have to regenerate. Nothing changed on my end because I had pre-created this panel. But what I wanna show you is if I make a selection, like I'm selecting this member of the subassembly over here, You'll notice that something has populated where it says BIMSF uh, subassembly. The default naming convention is panel 111-1. 1. 
Uh, again, like we mentioned before, we can uh, change this naming convention. So if I click on any one of these, it's going to have the same name for the subassembly because they're all part of the subassembly. But if I pick this one, for example, there's nothing there because it's not part of the subassembly. So how do we create a shop drawing for this? We need to go to Drawing, Operations, Wall Drawings Manager. I've already created a sheet or a sheet set for this. Uh, to do this, you would have to click here on Create New. And you would have to give it a name. And then you would double click. And then you would need to populate this. I'm not using multi-layer for today, but you can if you like. I'm using standard, and the point is to create a framing shock drawing and a subassembly shock drawing. Uh, they're going to be created at the same time. The view options you have to create, uh, you would have to make uh, view options for your framing, and then you're going to need to make view options for your subassembly. To do this, you're going to need to click here on the plus sign. So to create views for the framing, you're going to have to go to view. I've already created a 3D view, an elevation view, a floor plan view, and I've created a schedule. The schedule that I've, I've created was from over here. I've used, you could either use a custom schedule, custom BOM. You can also use any one of these schedules depending on what you want to show in your schedule, okay? To create a sub-assembly view, you have to go here and you have to go to subassembly. I've already created a 3D view, I've created an elevation, a floor plan view, and I've created a schedule type A. I'm just going to show you a quick overview of what the subassembly uh, view options or the views that I've created, what they look like. For the 3D view, of course you have to uh, dictate where you want to place them. So I'm just using mid-center to mid-center. The viewport type, I'm using no title. You can add a name on the sheet if you like. Here, you can assign a view template. I'm going to use subassembly. So this way that uh, the color scheme that I had created in Revit can be applied here. You would pick the detail level, the visual style, the preferred scale, and that's it. For the elevation, you have to specify what are the dimensions that you're using. And I didn't add any labels. You also have to specify where you want to uh, insert uh, your view. Uh, what is the viewport type? I'm not using anything. You can add a name to the sheet. I'm going to use a template for the view. I like to use shading with edges. Detail level could be medium or fine. You have to specify the dimensions, and there's no option for labels. The plan is something similar. You add the dimensions that you need, and you specify the same view settings. The subschedule, honestly, I just use it, use the default. I just uh, changed the width here to calculate. That's pretty much it. I didn't make any changes here, but you could you can change the data if you like. If you have another schedule, you can a master schedule, you can also duplicate existing schedule if you prefer to use a Revit schedule rather than use an MWF um, uh, created schedule. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to uh, just show what I've created here for subassembly. And for framing, it's pretty much the same concept. So you have to pick the layout that you, uh, the layout name that you're using. I'm using this one. And then you have to specify where you want to assign your zones. Uh, you can also specify the naming convention that you want to use. I'm using fixed name. And uh, here I've just called the subassembly sheet. And OK, so this is ready to be used. To create a shop drawing for this panel, or to create two shop drawings for this panel at the same time, I need to select one member of the panel. And then I need to click Shop Drawings. So you have to pick the setting that you want. I only have one. And here, if you have the stick, that's going to override anything existing. And just hit OK.
And then I'm going to notice that when I scroll down to where it says sheets, there's going to be two panels, uh, sorry, two sheets that have been populated for the same panel. They're both panel 111, but one of them is a framing sheet and one of them is a subassembly sheet. Let's take a look. So the framing sheet is going to show the whole panel and it's going to show the elevation view, the plan view, the 3D view, and the schedule that I have uh, specified. If I go to the subassembly sheet, the subassembly sheet is only going to show the subassembly elevation, the subassembly plan, and a schedule related to the subassembly and the 3D view uh, as you have specified. And that's it for this week's tech tip. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week.